In this video, I will share with you my experience using an e-bike for food delivery, plus some bonus tips on what are the essential accessories you should consider when purchasing an e-bike for food delivery. And we are starting right now! The classic step-through frame. I love this design. As a delivery rider, especially as someone who has trouble lifting my left leg high uh, due to an uh, old work-related injury, this frame design allows me to get an on and off the bike uh, effortlessly, uh, no matter how many times I do it. And you know, as food delivery riders, there are a lot of times that we need to get on and off the bike. The battery range. This is my first e-bike, so I don't really have uh, any previous experience to rely on. Uh, I have heard that e-bikes are notorious for their battery consumption. However, uh, I feel the power on this bike is uh, pretty well balanced. Uh. The controller is uh, fast and responsive. Uh, I don't know the technical specification, but the way that the controller and the battery is connected with the motor, it uh, feels very responsive. At the same time, even though my battery is on the lower range at 12.8 uh, AH, there is uh, enough juice to hit more than 20 orders with uh, enough power to get me back home. The hand grips. Previously, when I first got the e-bike, I mentioned I had some pain while using these uh, textured grips. But after constant usage for more than a month, I have grown accustomed to these. In fact, I find the shape to be ergonomically better fitting now, and I love the duckbill design. I admit my initial impression was uh, way off the mark on these uh, hand grips. Speed and power. I am very happy with the speed and motor power. Uh, actually, I am able to achieve the maximum speed of 25 km per hour on just the first mode, mode 1 itself. So, uh, excuse my, you know, the shakiness of the footage. What I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to record the 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 lcd display so that you can see that you know i'm hitting 25 kilometers per hour on mode one i will usually alternate between mode one and two uh, mostly i keep mode one during my starting phase uh, and then mode two is my cruising uh, speed so basically i i would actually uh, just cruise between these two on flat surfaces and at uh, chua chukang or you know, a uh, better part of UT among these places. Uh. Uh, however, uh, I reserve mode 3 for climbing steep hills. Uh. So normally that is how I actually manage my, 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 my speed and my, and my battery power. The cruising speed at mode 2 uh, actually allows me to, you know, get to places uh, quickly uh, without uh, sacrificing the pa battery power. Mode 3 is a real lifesaver when I need the extra power to get me up the steep slopes of uh, Bukit Panjang. Uh, actually, this particular slope uh, is one of the steepest slopes I have ever encountered uh, around Bukit Panjang. Uh. So, you know, with, uh, with on Mode 3, it's really very effortless. Uh, I just need to paddle slowly and, you know, the moto does the rest of the work. And even when I encounter situations like these, you know, where I have to stop halfway on the slope, restarting back the moto uh, is really very easy. I just have to paddle uh, just a little bit and uh, I think like about one quarter and the moto kicks in and I'm able to paddle, you know, uh, efficiently and uh, just uh, get up the slope effortlessly without any issue. Let's talk about the seat. I call this seat the butt cracker. The seat is really terrible on long rides. For short rides, it is quite uh, acceptable. Uh. However, for full-time riders, they should definitely change the seat for better butt comfort. It's, uh, it's not really a seat meant for long-term riding. So change the seat as soon as possible. Hybrid brakes. As most of you know, my previous manual bicycle was uh, using disc brakes on both sides, uh, which allowed me to actually stop my vehicle faster. I found that there is an option to change the rear clamp brakes 
on the Colmex to disc brakes. However, now I have gotten used to the hybrid brakes now. Uh, but the point is that even though having the option to change the rear clamp brakes, I would like to see or I would have preferred that, you know, they actually have it built in on the stock model. That means, you know, like both uh, brakes are like disc brakes. Uh, uh, instead of me, you know, uh, later on having to go and uh, change it. Uh, that is, this is my personal preference. Uh. The main reason why is because, you know, when I pull the lever to brake, right, uh, there is some time, it takes me some time to for the vehicle to come to a complete stop uh, compared to the disc brakes, which has a shorter period to stop. Next, let's talk about the essential e-bike accessories, uh, which I got. E-bikes generally fall into two general consumer categories. You have riders who are using them for leisure and then you have riders who invest in it to earn money such as food delivery riders. So uh, these are the following are the accessories which I have uh, invested in to make my delivery rides pleasant and uh, safer not just for me but for other road users uh, as well. The foldable rack. I love this foldable rack man. It's just perfect. I pop it up whenever I am doing food delivery and uh, fold it down once uh, I am done for the day and it looks like a regular e-bike. It is uh, very sturdy and strong so I don't need to have a bulky rack attached to the back of my bike. Bonus uh, issue is that once it's uh, folded it does not take up more space than a regular bicycle. The first few days when I was delivering with the stock model, I had problems signaling to other road users when I wanted to filter to lanes, not to mention how dangerous it is to ride one-handed and use the other hand to signal. Ever since I installed the turning lights, I have had stress-free rides on busy roads. The only downside is that even though it has a horn symbol on the switch, there is no actual horn provided, which kind of feels disappointing because uh, I was expecting there to be a horn. As you know, there is a picture of a horn! However, once I look past it, then what I have is a very capable, robust turning light system for my e-bike at a reasonable price. Side view mirrors. If you are an e-bike food delivery rider, get side view mirrors installed ASAP. It is ridiculous, you know, that e-bike riders are expected to ride on the road, yet do not have mirrors on their bike. It comes down to eliminating the rider's blind spots. Hence, I got these, you know, uh, side view mirrors. Uh, I installed them a couple of days ago, uh, but however, I find that I'm only using the right-sided mirror. Maybe the left side, I might actually remove it. Uh. In fact, taking it a bit further, I would say that all food delivery e-bikes uh, should have integrated turning lights and side view mirrors, not just for our safety, but for the safety of all road users. I simply cannot understand why the authorities don't make this mandatory on, on all e-bikes. It is like buying a car or motorbike with no indicators or side view mirrors, man. And, you know, uh, it's all, it, it actually comes down to a safety issue as well. You know, uh, it's safer for us and for other road users whom we share the road with. Well, and uh, there you have it. Remember that when you buy a vehicle, whether it is a bicycle or e-bike or motorcycle for food delivery, Make sure to set aside a budget for additional related accessories as well. And uh, finally, to round it off, how, was, how has uh, getting an e-bike affected my food delivery adventures? Well, my uh, earnings has actually increased by about 15% to 20%, I would say. On GrabFood, I used to do on average about two orders per hour, which has uh, since changed to an average of three orders. So, I am able to increase my earnings by the hour lah. On uh, Deliveroo, I am getting more orders constantly compared to when I was using a bicycle. The flip side to this is that I am also getting longer distance orders, but it is fine with me as the earnings are better per order. However, most importantly, I don't feel exhausted after my rides. I, I do feel tired, lah, but it is not the bone-wrenching type of tiredness, you know, I used to feel after cycling, which is why I totally respect cyclists and walkers a lot. Food delivery is a tough job. Every single dollar 
is earned by determined and hard working riders who want to make a decent living to provide for their family and that is my takeaway ride safe be safe and i wish you all good earnings Thank mm-hmm. you.